Hello everyone, this is Theo. Welcome to another watercolor video. Today I'm going to paint a watercolor chart using this set of Hobin watercolors. I have received many requests to review Hobin watercolors over the last few years and the only review that I have is actually a text review that is on my blog and it's written by my friend. So today I want to test these colors out myself and give you some of my thoughts. This is not a full review, this is just a watercolor chart painting video. Hobin is one of the largest art supplies manufacturer in Japan. They only have one watercolor product and that's the Hobin Artist Watercolor. They don't have any student grade watercolor. Hobin watercolor is available in tubes and pans and in sets like this. They have a range of 108 colors. For the pans, the selection of colors is a bit more limited. Now this particular set was bought in Japan for a very good price. I cannot remember how much it was, but I did a search on eBay and a 12 tube set like this, where each tube is 5 ml. This is 25 US dollar, including shipping. They have the 18 color set, which is around 40 US dollar and the 24 color set which is around 50 US dollar all inclusive of shipping on eBay. You can buy the colors individually as well of course but for beginners it's more economical to get the tube set because the pricing it's really attractive. This is the watercolor chart that I have drawn with pencil on 100% cotton watercolor paper and this is the list of colors that I included. I will talk more about the colors as I paint along. The first color I'm going to paint is ivory black. I'm going to paint it in concentration over here and let it fade to the left side. I am not going to use this color to mix with other colors because this is going to... Um, black is going to sort of really kill um, the other colors. So the water is running down because the surface is actually wet. I have pre-wet the surface to let the colors diffuse, to help the colors diffuse. For the next color, I'm going to jump to using permanent yellow light. And the reason is because I want to leave a gap here. I notice my ivory black, I actually painted out of the line. So I want to make sure that this is dry first before I paint Chinese white. And I'm going to do that for subsequent color. I'm just going to turn it and jump. At the same time, I also want to paint the grid that is beside. By the way, I actually have a dedicated video on how you can draw and paint a color chart yourself. If you're interested, if you're interested to check out that video, the link is in the video description below. Permanent yellow light looks like a warm yellow to me. The pigment used is PY74 and PY83. The next color that I want to paint is vermilion hue. Do check your tubes before you squeeze the paint out because sometimes the binder may actually separate from the pigment. In this case it has, so I'm going to take away some of the binder first. With the yellow that I was using earlier, the binder has also separated so I had to squeeze that out first before I can get to the paint. And this is what I'm doing again with this color. Painting a color chart is a very time consuming process and you have to be very careful. If you make any mistakes, like if you paint the wrong color in the wrong box, well, it's not going to make your, make your color chart look nice, so I have to be very careful. I noticed earlier I used a lot more paint, so this time I'm going to dilute the paint properly to get the lighter tones to show up more clearly. See how the red is out of the box? If I were to paint the next color, the See how the red is out of the box? If I were to paint the next color, the color would diffuse into this swatch here. So now I'm painting cobalt blue hue. Cobalt blue hue is PB29 and PB15. That's ultramarine and phthalo blue. Hobin actually has cobalt blue 
and cobalt blue hue. So these are the colors currently on the grid. Now for the top right portion here, I will be painting the color mixes in concentration. And for the bottom left side, I will dilute the mixes to get the lighter tone. So the first mixture that I have here, this is permanent yellow light mixed with vermilion hue. This gives us a very nice warm orange. And here this will be the diluted version. The next color is permanent green, number one. This is a bright yellow green. I'm tilting the paper so that the pink can run down very easily. The pigment used in this color is PY3, PY53, and PG7. The light fast rating according to Hobin is 2 stars out of 3. Next we have Burnt Sienna. This is a nice Burnt Sienna PB7, PBR7. With some brands, the Burnt Sienna can appear to be very light, but this is quite intense. And some brands would use PR101 for burnt sienna instead of PBR7. So far this is what we have. So this portion has already dried. So now I can paint the other colors. And now I'm using Chinese white. Chinese white looks like a pretty opaque color. So it's definitely opaque. You can see how it covers the black on the left. This version of Chinese white uses PW6. Now some people like to use Chinese white to mix with other colors to create a lighter tone, to create a more pastel light color. Personally for me, I would use Chinese white on its own, usually as an opaque color to cover over other colors. This Chinese white is made with PW6. It's supposed to be an opaque color. Some people like to use white to mix with other colors to make their colors more pastel-like or lighter in tone. Personally, I like to use opaque white to cover over other colors to create highlights. Next, we have yellow ochre. This is PY42. And this is Crimson Lake made with three pigments, PR177, PR122, and PV19. This is Prussian Blue. Some people like to use this color instead of Ultramarine, but this color is not light fast. So according to Hobin, this has a light fast rating of 2 out of 3. 3 is the best, 3 stars. So this is only 2 out of 3. And other brands with Prussian Blue, well, they are also not light fast. And this is Viridian Hue. Viridian Cis. And this is Viridian Hue. Viridian is supposed to be a granulating color, a granulating green. Some people like to use this instead of phthalo green. This Viridian hue uses PG7. And finally, we have burnt umber, this dark brown. Burnt umber uses PBR7, just like burnt sienna. So these are the swatches that I have so far. From what I can see, the colors, they are quite vibrant. The quality looks quite good for a 12 tube set that costs only US $25. Now, certain colors are not light fast and the ones you should take note of are permanent yellow light, Prussian blue and permanent green number one. Now this is quite ironic because the name is permanent green, but the light fast rating is actually two stars out of a possible three. Creating a color chart is a time consuming and tedious process, but it's also a very helpful tool to let you see at a glance what are the possible colors you can create using the existing colors that you 
have. All right, now I'm going to fast forward this section where I'm going to paint the color mixes. So this is the color chart that I have created. It took me around two hours, so it's definitely very time consuming to create this. If you have even more colors, it's going to take even more time. But 12 colors is actually a good number for color mixing. So let's take a look at the colors that we can get. Let's take a look at the secondary colors like orange. So we can get a bright orange with permanent yellow light and vermilion hue. This is a very nice orange. Purples, we have cobalt blue and crimson lake. This is nice. When it's diluted, it looks like this. And for greens, we have this permanent yellow light and cobalt blue. This looks like a sap green. And this beside that is mixed with Prussian. This is a bit, um, I would say a bit bluish compared to this. So the top right portion of this is concentrated and this part here, this is diluted. And this part here, definitely the colors, they look more pastel-like. And notice this row of colors here that is mixed with Chinese white. This row of colors here is very similar to these colors here, which are diluted with water, but these were mixed with white. And while I was painting these colors, I could definitely feel and see the opacity of the colors. So if you want transparent colors, it's best to just mix your colors with other primary colors and then dilute them to get those pastel light tones or to get those lighter tones. So this 12 tube set is quite versatile for color mixing. It would even be... So this 12 tube set is quite versatile for color mixing. It would be even more versatile if they had replaced Chinese white and ivory black with two other primary colors. So let's take a look at the swatches in greater detail. Permanent yellow light is a nice mid yellow, but the downside is the light pass rating is only two stars out of three. This version of yellow curry is very nice. You can use this to create very beautiful skin tones with reds. It has good light fast rating. Ochre colors are usually very light fast. And here we have vermilion hue. This is not as intense or as warm as I expected compared to other brands. Maybe because this was created with three pigments. PO73, PR254, and PY110. So there's a yellow, there's an orange, and there's a red. And this color looks a bit uh, towards the orange side. Maybe that's why it's not as intense. Crimson Lake is another three pigment paint. This looks like magenta to me. Cobalt blue hue, cobalt blue is always nice. Prussian blue, this is not light fast. If I were to swap this out, I would replace this with French ultramarine. Of course, the classic choice. Another three pigment paint, permanent green light. This is also not light fast. Radian hue, PG7. This is the same pigment that is used to create phthalo green. And in this case here, it does look a bit like phthalo green. Viridian is supposed to be granulating, but here I don't see any granulation, even with the mixes. This is burnt sienna. This burnt sienna is very intense, it's very nice. We have burnt umber, which is also quite intense. I like these two earth tones, they are very nice, very beautiful. Overall, the colors are quite transparent for the swatches. I painted them over the names that I have written in ink and the ink was able to show through quite clearly. And also the colors, they are definitely very intense, very vibrant when mixed and very vibrant on their own. Another thing I noticed is there isn't a lot of granulation even with the earth uh, colors like ochre, burnt sienna, and burnt umber, all these mixes here, they look pretty flat to me. There is some texture, but that's mostly because of the texture of the watercolor paper. I don't really see a lot of granulation. 
See these two rows here? The first row was mixed with burnt sienna, the second row with burnt umber, and look at the colors, look at the mixes. Almost no granulation at all. Some of the colors neutralize each other quite nicely. For example, vermilion and cobalt blue, we get this color here, which is very nice. We have crimson lake and permanent green light here. It's also very nice. Cobalt blue with burnt sienna. Cobalt blue with burnt umber. And many of these are neutralized colors, very pastel-like colors. They look very nice. If you want a neutral gray, you would have to mix that on your own using three primary colors. All right, so to conclude, I am quite satisfied with the quality of the paint made by Hovind. I mean, for 25 US dollars, you get 12 tubes, each tube is 5 ml, and you get this sort of performance. I think it's really worth the money. I will scan the color chart and put it on my website so that you can view it at high resolution. So that's all for today's video. I hope this is helpful. And if you do find this helpful, hit the like button or check out my other watercolor videos. All right, thanks for watching. See you in the next video. Bye.